everybody. Welcome back to another session of The Hoppery. My name is Mark Starr and today we're going to be looking at a beer that comes from Massachusetts. Um, to be exact, it comes from, uh, let's see, where is it? Westminster, Massachusetts. So uh, it comes to us from a brewery called Wachusett Brewing Company. And this is their Larry, which is an Imperial IPA that clocks in right about 7.5%. So um, it's kind of on the borderline of being a regular IPA or a double IPA, but that's what they classify it as. They even say it on the bottle, Imperial IPA. So, hey, that's what I'm going to go with. But um, this is a beer that I actually got as part of one of my trades, um, you know, and I've had it in the refrigerator, but I wanted to get it on the show as soon as possible because one thing that you'll know about me, if you don't, is that I have a campaign called Fridge the Hops. And the reason why I have this campaign is that you know, as part of doing these reviews, one of the things that I really want to get across to people who, you know, may be watching these for the first time, is that when you talk about pale ales or India pale ales, um, things that are just extremely uh, heavily hopped, you want to make sure that you immediately put those in the refrigerator. Hell, if you can get your liquor store to keep them in the refrigerator, that's even better. Uh, but what you're going to do is, you know, really help preserve uh, the flavor and the aromatics that the hops have to offer. So anyway, this is a limited release for them. It's called their uh, Public House Series, uh, which I believe they're just a few beers that they have that they release in uh, limited quantities. Uh, they don't have very many beers that I've noticed. I went and kind of did some research on the brewery, and um, all in all, I think maybe they've produced around 20 or less. So I would imagine a lot of those are for you know, their actual brew, uh, brew house. But um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pour this one and uh, let's see what the East Coast has got to offer. All right, I think that's about enough. So I'll set that up there so you can kind of take a look at the bottle. Um, in terms of color, you know, this one's, it's virtually orange. So there's really not a whole lot of golden. Um, it's, it's pretty much clear and orange color, so really nice color for an IPA or an Imperial IPA. Um, kind of looks like a West Coast IPA, just in terms of being clear. Kind of reminds me of, like, say, the Hop Stupid um, and how that one's filtered. Uh, but anyway, the head on it, you know, it's that really light white color. Nothing, you know, extraordinary here. Um, just a traditional looking head. Uh, but if you give it a little swirl here, you can see that it really kind of, you know, brings up a good amount of head so um, you know and just moving it around the heads really kind of stick into the glass um, you know you, you always want to make sure another uh, tangent here for you sorry you always want to make sure that your glasses are really clean on the inside and that's what's going to provide that really good lacing that's what's going to keep them from taking on flavors um, that you might pull off from the insides of your glasses but anyway with that said, let's go ahead and get our nose in there and see what's going on. Wow, interesting. Okay, so I'll tell you what, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that this smells extremely uh, West Coast. So a lot of the IPAs that you get from the East Coast will tend to have more of a, a piney character, uh, maybe even an earthy or spicy character. Um, and when you get to the West Coast IPAs, you know, like the Pliny's, the Hop Stupid's, uh, the Union Jacks, you really start getting this um, really high citrus component. I'm getting a lot of that out of here. Lots of orange, lots of um, mango, maybe just a touch of pineapple. Not a, not a whole lot, but it's kind of, it, it's in there. There is a touch of pine. Um, you know, I know that they use Simcoe hops in here, so um, that's going to really kind of give, uh, you know, the citrus component a, a little bit of pininess underneath. So this is a really, really good smelling beer. Hmm. Well, man, I bet if it smells this good, I bet it tastes even better. So let's give it a spin. Man, I'll tell you, you know what, this really reminds me a lot of a cross between like a Hop Stupid um, and say a Hair of the Dog Blue Dot. It really situates itself in there. It's one of these beers where 
the maltiness is is very subdued. Um, in fact, just on first sip, let me let me try it again. I, I think you know, in terms of things like Pliny and Hop Stupid, you know, those are IPAs that really have light malt characteristics. And the reason why that's good in most cases is that you know it really allows those hops to shine. Um, you know, you'll see some Imperial IPAs out there where there's so much malt in it that it almost feels like a barley wine. Honestly, that's not really my thing. I, I really tend to lean towards uh, IPAs like this more that have that really light caramel component, but then with just an explosion of hops. And the aromatic hops on this is just phenomenal. I mean, they're very, very, very potent. There is a good amount of bitterness. I, I think really the bitterness, though, is a touch too high. Um, so I think that if there was just a touch more malt in here, just to give it maybe a little bit more sweetness. I think that that sweetness and that bitterness uh, would really round this out nicely. But, you know, with that said, uh, this is still a very, very good beer. And the fact that it comes from Massachusetts, and I know this is only distributed in maybe, God, I don't know, two or three states. It's not very much. The fact that this is so West Coast is quite intriguing to me. You know, on the taste, um, not only are you getting a good bitterness, uh, you know, getting kind of that light caramel and tangerine flavor or orange flavor, there's also a little bit of honeysuckle in there. And I don't know if when you guys were kids, I know I used to go pull the little honeysuckle flowers off and, you know, kind of eat the, the little syrup that was in there. There's a little bit of that going on in here, which I find to be really pleasing. It kind of gives it a nice, uh, you know, floral component. But, you know, all in all, this is, this, is, this is very surprising to me. And maybe it shouldn't be surprising, but, um, you know, I think we can all kind of understand the difference in West Coast and East Coast IPAs and, and their subtleties. And some people, you know, prefer West Coast. Some people prefer East Coast. Some people like Belgian IPAs. You know, there's something out there for everybody. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really happy about this beer. I think it's uh, a lot better than I thought it would be. So if I had to recommend other beers like this one, uh, definitely the Hair of the Dog Blue Dot, um, definitely the Hop Stupid from Lagunitas. I would also even go so far as to say the Union Jack. So if you like any of those three, um, I would highly suggest trying to hunt one of these down. Maybe you can get it in a trade. Um, so anyway, well guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop it for now. And I just want to remind you guys to fridge the hops. And uh, that's about it. My name is Mark Starr, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.